Hi, I'm Dr. Francis. I'm a world-renowned wildlife nutritionist. You may not have heard of me, but your mating tortoises sure have. And today I will be answering some FAQs from you. So we asked far and wide for your questions on feeding dogs and cats and just any questions that you might have about anything related to feeding. Can human snacks ever be safe for pets? They could. Nuts and seeds are, except for macadamia, they're human snacks and they're fine for pets as long as they're you know, not salted or flavored or anything like that. If you chop them up small, there's no choking hazard. Sure, they're fine. Um, meat. Actually, most human snacks could be fine for a pet. Doesn't mean they're good for them because a snack isn't good for us either, right? A snack is like junk, junk food. It, there's a reason why it's a snack, it's not a meal. So then it probably won't be great for your pet either, but doesn't mean it's not safe. Like, um, if you avoid, of course, toxic foods like grapes and uh, onions, anything in the onion family, um, avocado seed or pit, which human food shouldn't have anyway, uh, alcohol, chocolate, mm, and some sweeteners uh, like xylitol, uh, those are probably the things you're going to want to look at. But it, beyond that, it, it may not be healthy for your pet, doesn't mean it's toxic. Um, but again, I would just strongly encourage you to give single ingredient treats for your dog for long-term health, like just dried or uh, dehydrated chicken, beef, or even broccoli or sweet potatoes or you know something else. You'd be surprised what your pet likes once it's dried and crunchy. Next question, is Dr. Francis a dog or cat person? Uh, I, <laughs> I am both. I, uh, I, am, uh, I am the bisexual of the pet world. <laughs> I like dogs and cats equally. I love them both. Uh, because of my family's preferences though, I have only had dogs uh, up until this point. But I am very excited to have a Siamese and or a Sphinx very soon in my life. A Sphinx cat. Uh, and of course dogs. I've had Dachshunds, Dachshunds, Dachshunds my whole life. Uh, and now I am the proud stepdad to a very fluffy poodle. Hi, Ripley. <laughs> okay, four more questions. What should I consider before preparing homemade meals for my pet? Oh, such a good question. It, it's so complicated. Um, we have a few reaction videos of me reacting to people doing homemade meals online. Do take a look because I do point out some things that are missing from those diets that you may like, you know, they may be useful tips for you. It's difficult because the first thing you need is a recipe. And it's so hard to find a fully balanced recipe. There's this one study that looked at over a thousand recipes they found online from pet nutritionists and even, what well, can do this, vets. <laughs> okay, they're real vets. And 99% of them, 99% of them were not balanced. That's scary. That's scary. It's really hard to know who to trust. So if you take uh, guidance from the World Association of Vets, they say the only people that are actually educated enough and qualified enough to formulate recipes are PhD nutritionists Hi. or veterinary nutritionists. So even technically, according to them, your normal general vet is not even qualified to formulate diets because they need to take other exams to be a vet nutritionist. Not my words, don't attack me in the comments. Uh, this is the World Vet Association's checklist. So. Unless someone has a proven track record of complete and balanced, or they have, I don't know, lab reports on, on, on their recipes or something like that, I think you should be a little bit more cautious about where you get your recipes and your information from. We also have some cooking videos as well, where uh, formulas, formulas that I made myself, um, that I have analyzed myself, and the nutrients are all in the, the YouTube video as well. So you can take a look, hopefully that can help. We have some cook ones for dogs and we have some raw, uh, homemade recipes for cats as well. So hopefully that helps. Are there any ingredients I should avoid when choosing pet food? Oh my God, so many, Ooh, so many. Like high starch ingredients you want to avoid like corn, wheat, rice, um, even barley, uh, oats. I mean, in small amounts, those things can be perfectly fine. But if they're a big part of the food, especially in kibbles or canned food, and then your pet gets it every day, that burden really adds up. It makes it really, really tough on their insulin response uh, long term, which affects on a whole host of metabolic reactions as well. So you really want to 
cool it with the high carb ingredients. Um, really try and go with as much meat, as much organs as possible. Uh, you're gonna wanna have some fruits and veggies in there for sure. Some seaweed and stuff, that's all good, but what to avoid, and anything you can't pronounce are generally things that you're, you're not gonna wanna have in your pet food. Uh, of course, preservatives are things you're not gonna want. Dyes, colorants, you know, these are not, these are not things that are, are known. <laughs> they're, not, they're not associated with long-term health for your pet. Um, some gelling agents are a, a bit of a question mark. Some of them are completely safe. Um, but a lot of people, just because it changes the texture, they get a bit nervous, especially if they see like carrageenan and stuff. Um, but some um, gelling agents or texture enhancers like gum are completely fine. Like we know that guar gum is, not only is it safe, but in the right amounts, it's actually not bad for their gut health. Uh, we know that like gum arabic or peach gum, those things can help change the texture. They're actually amazing for your dog or cat's gut health too. So not everything is scary, but um, a lot of these chemicals, a lot of these things that are made in the lab, you should probably think twice before you feed them to your pet. Two more. Um, are there any supplements that are particularly beneficial for older pets? Awesome question. You can look at my video on senior pets, um, but happy to answer that quickly here. Omega-3, do it. Um, antioxidants like berries, do it. Um, uh, oh my God. Oh my, there's just so many that are so good. Um, you're gonna wanna add in a little bit of protein if you're feeding kibble, you're gonna wanna add in another source of protein, uh, like some fresh meat, that'd be great. I love digestive enzymes for older pets because it really helps to make sure they're digesting as well as when they were younger and absorb all the nutrients that they still need. Just because they're older doesn't mean they need less nutrients, that is nonsense. They need the same nutrients as an adult, but their digestive efficiency has reduced. So they're getting less from the food. And then if you're buying like, crap senior kibbles, which have even less for whatever reason, it doesn't make any sense. So you're gonna want to make sure you're still feeding high quality, very nutritious food for your senior pets. Um, and like I said, add in omega-3s, add in some fish, add in these antioxidants. Oh, spirulina, fantastic for immune system. Mushrooms, great for immune system as well. Um, decaffeinated green tea, super good. Um, there's quite a lot you can do for your older pets. A lot of the thing is you're gonna to wanna to give the same thing when they're younger, because it helps to prevent issues. You probably just wanna give a little bit more when they're older, that's it. Oh, turmeric, oh, turmeric, turmeric, so good. Pinch of black pepper in there just to make sure that they can actually absorb it and use it. Um, yeah, there's a lot you can add into your, your senior pet food. Mm. But again, everything I'm saying is proven to be helpful. However, take that money first and spend it on a higher quality fresh food which ultimately will have more benefits than you buying a crap food and then spending money on a lot of supplements. Yes? Yes. Last question. How can I encourage a picky eater to try new foods? Hmm, I bet you're a cat owner, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe not, you have some very picky dogs too. You're gonna to wanna to try and mix the new food with the old food and you're gonna do even like 10% of the new food first, mix them together. And you know what, they may not like it, they may not eat at all, that's fine, you gotta keep going. You know ultimately what you're doing is for your pet's uh, benefit long-term, so even if they don't eat it at first, but you know it's better, you gotta keep going. Keep mixing, keep doing it over long-term, especially if you have a cat and some dogs and you're converting from kibble or canned food over to fresh food, that can take you months. And guess what, you're not alone. You're not alone, it's perfectly normal. You know what you're doing is better for your pet, you gotta keep going. Um, and sometimes it helps to go to a cooked food first and then from the cooked food over to raw food, if that is your goal. Staying in a gently cooked food is also excellent. You don't need to go to raw if you don't want. Um, but mixing is always the best thing. Make sure that if it's a bit warm, it can help also to ease them in, you know, all the, the, the smells. Uh, and cooking the food more when you're transitioning also can help because you're getting some of that, you know, caramelization, some of this Maillard reaction, which really, really helps to like excite all of their uh, olfactory cells um, in their nose. May make it more tasty at first, and then you can slowly cook it less and less and less and then convert from there. You gotta be smart, because your pets are smart. Well, these are all the FAQs that we had today. I hope that this answered some of your questions. And like I said before, don't be shy. Comment below on our social media. Continue asking us all these questions, and then I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.